Hello guys, welcome back to Life of Clay and also welcome to all our new viewers out there. Again, it's Kenji here and today we will be sculpting the carnivorous and yet cute mammal, the Scottish River Otter, Lutra Lutra. And if you like more animal sculpting tutorials and want to miss out more of our future videos, please subscribe and turn on the bell icon so you will be updated and your support will be very much appreciated. Alright then. Come, get your mug of coffee, and let's begin. I first draw a quick plain sketch of our cute otter. Then I file the tip of a 3mm aluminum wire to make it pointy. And this will be for his tail. Stainless wires is what I use for his legs. Bend them according to the reference. And attach them to the main wire using two parts epoxy. Reinforce them with cotton string. And I also add epoxy to the armature to hold the aluminum foil in place and start bulking it. Secure the foils with masking tape and start posing him. I do the sculpting in sections so I can hold the other part of the armature and start sculpting the hind body. Cover it with a thin sheet of clay, I use Sculpey Original for this one, and start shaping it. The otter Lutra Lutra was lost from most of England and Wales between the 1950s and the 1970s because of pesticide solution of waterways. But it survived in Scotland's cleanest bodies of water in the north and west, with the population of 8,000 nowadays. Otters are largely solitary and semi-aquatic mammals that get most of their food from river, locks, or the sea, and they must eat at least 1 to 1.5 kg of prey daily. Crustaceans, fish like trout, and salmon is top choice in their menu. But that is not limited there. Birds and other amphibians are also delicacy to them. They are active during the day and back to their shelter called holts, a natural burrow to rest and to breathe. We can now start adding fur texture, starting from the top all the way down. I personally made this tool and I called it the Wolverine Claw Tool, made out of stainless steel rods, filed down the tip and glued in this wooden handle. And in doing fur texturing job, always observe and give attention to the natural wave or directions of the fur. This adds a more realistic and natural looks to the sculpture. Otters also have a long slim bodies and relatively short limbs. The most striking anatomical features are the powerful web feet used to swim and their seal-like ability to hold their breath underwater. And they also have a very sharp teeth enables them to crack open shellfish and break their prey's bones. Attention to details is a must, so I added also his genital to complete the package. For all the protruding parts, like this tip of the tail, feet, and the ears, I use Scalby Premo, which is a more durable type of clay. And for authenticity, I made my very own stamp so I can add my brand name underside my sculptures. And we can now do the first baking. And we can now proceed in sculpting the poor body. Same procedures is applied, giving attention to all the muscles and anatomical characteristic of the author.
Now sculpting the head, cover it with clay, trim, and shape it. And as soon as I got the basic shape of the head, I marked the face to guide me for better proportion. Adding some muscles on his snout where whiskers are attached and also add his nose and shaping his mouth. I embedded these two small pre-baked polymer clay balls for his eyes and adding the eyelids around them. Now for texturing the head and add his ears. Poke the area of his face where whiskers are to be attached along with those few eyebrows. And again using heat gun to temporarily cure all the sections. And now let's do his feet, starting with the hind legs. Lastly, his front legs. And after this, he will undergo final baking to completely cure the whole sculpture. We can now proceed in painting the sculpture. This is my first time to use an airbrush. I bought this portable one online and so far I love the job it performed. I use Folk Art Acrylic of Coffee Brown for the base color. In using airbrush machine, appropriate paint actually is required. Usually they are thin and rich in pigments. But at the moment, I use Folk Art Acrylics that I thin down with water and they are still fine so far. Just in between uses, clean the nozzles immediately to avoid the paint from building up and may clog the hole. Mixing burnt amber and little amount of black for the darker fur of his back. Mixing coffee brown and burnt shenna for his underside. And for the underside of his neck and throat, I use titanium white mixed with little amount of coffee brown and burnt amber. And to harmonize the transition of colors, I brush it with wash of burnt shenna and burnt amber, mixed with acrylic medium. Painting the eyes with burnt amber and black mix. Painting the lips with pinkish paint using titanium white, alizarin crimson, and yellow ochre. Also his feet web and more lighter version of this mix for his claws.
and we can now seal it with varnish. I mix two types of varnish, the semi matte and ultra matte, using airbrush to make the ceiling evenly thin. gloss varnish for his eyes and nose. And for the finishing touch, adding his whiskers, using these paint brush hairs, dipping one end of the hair in glue and insert to those poke holes we made earlier. Now it really looks like alive, isn't it? And there we go, our cute little otter is finally done. We will do more mammals sculpture in the future so if you have any suggestion guys, leave them down in the comment below and help me out to choose for our next subject. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and your subscription, likes, shares, and follows will be more appreciated. Thank you so much everyone, see you again next time.